In this brief video, I'd like to walk you through the process of setting up a machine in HSMWorks for machine simulation. For the purposes of demonstration, we'll use a model of the new UMC750 that was provided to us by our friends over at Haas. Before we jump into the actual setup, I'd like to draw your attention to what's going on in SOLIDWORKS so you understand the requirements for the model that will then be used for the simulation. The first thing that we should notice is each component that's going to move is an individual piece inside of our assembly. The other thing I want you to notice is all of these parts are fixed. This is important. Oftentimes when users first try and set up machines for machine simulation, they assume that we need to set up mates with limit distances in order to properly capture the kinematics of the machine. However, we're going to take care of the kinematics inside of the machine configuration side of HSMWorks. So we simply have a rigid assembly of all of the components that are going to move inside of the machine simulation. The other thing you'll note is the square brackets around the components. This means the components are virtual. It's a very helpful method of saving everything together in one file instead of having an assembly file with multiple components. This last model that I created is a virtual envelope of my workpiece so we can quickly identify whether or not the part is within the envelope of the machine. In this case, I've not yet made it a virtual component, so I'd like to show you how to do that. We're simply going to right click and select Make Virtual. I'll select OK, and the virtual component is now stored within the SOLIDWORKS assembly. Now the last two things I want to show you that we've already created in SOLIDWORKS is two coordinate systems. One coordinate system is identifying where the machine zero point is going to be, and the other coordinate system is identifying where our tools are going to attach for the purposes of simulation. So with a brief understanding of the model that we've imported into SOLIDWORKS and how we've prepared that model to begin setting up the simulation, we can move over to the CAM Manager tab to start defining our machine. We'll simply right click the machine name at the top of our CAM Manager and select Edit Simulation. We need to start by defining a new machine. In the description section, let's go ahead and give our machine a name. The dimension section is helpful to define the overall footprint of the machine, but not necessary for the kinematics, while the capabilities defines what the machine is capable of. Let's go ahead and let the software know that it has 41 pockets for tools, actually 40 pockets for tools and one spindle, and we're going to have a maximum feed rate of 650 inches per minute. Again, the workpiece information is Interesting to document, but not necessary for the kinematic simulation, so we can move to the spindle settings. Here we want to confirm that we have a one set in the z-axis to indicate the spindle is attached to the z-axis. This of course is the norm. And we'll enter a maximum spindle speed of 8100 RPM. In our case, we're working with a machine that has rotary axes, so we're going to skip the linear axis section and jump straight to the rotary axis section and then work our way back. We want to enable a fourth axis. This axis is going to be the B axis. It's connected to the table. And we'll enter a 1 in the Y area to indicate that it's rotating positively around the Y axis. A negative would indicate that it was rotating negatively around the Y axis. In the case of this particular trunnion, we want to prefer that the motions are moving in the positive direction. So we'll have a preference to positive. Finally, we need to set the axis travel range, and that's going to go from negative 35 degrees to positive 110 degrees. With the B axis set, we can select the drop down and add a fifth axis. We need to enable that, and this is going to be the C axis. Again, the C-axis is connected to the table, and it's rotating around our Z-axis. There's no need to define a preference or a minimum-maximum value because this axis can spin continually in 360 degrees. 
So finally, we're going to move to the linear axis section and ensure all of our settings are correct here as well. The x-axis of this machine is attached to the head. Our minimum travel is negative 21 inches and our maximum travel is 9 inches. Moving to the y-axis, our minimum travel is negative 10 inches with a maximum travel of 10 inches. Again, the y-axis is connected to the head. Finally, with the z-axis, this machine can travel down 18 inches and up 2 inches. The last thing we need to set is one of the most important aspects of defining the machine configuration. And that defines the order in which all of these components are connected together. So let's move this box out of the way so we can visualize. The base connects to the B axis, which then connects to the C axis, which then connects to the table. Next we have the workpiece, then the spindle, then the Z axis, then the Y axis, finally the X axis, which is inside of the machine, which again is connected to the base of the machine. If these series of axes are not correct, your machine simulation is not going to work correctly. Simply use the up and down icons to change the order in which these axes are connected. So with our machine configuration set, we can select OK. The next step is defining which components are the actual axes, as well as where the tool connects and where the origin of the machine is. Let's start with the origin. We're going to expand out the feature tree and select the coordinate system that I've defined as the machine zero. We can do the same thing for the tool attach point. Moving down through the settings, we need to define the base of the machine. So I'll go ahead and select that component and move down to the x-axis component. The unique thing here is the x-axis is actually inside of the machine. It's not viewable. We don't need to see it in the simulation, so we don't need to select anything. In reality, we could run a full machine simulation with just a table and a head floating if that's all that was necessary to you. We only need to select the components that we actually want to visualize in the simulation. Let's go ahead and select the drop-down, choose the y-axis. Now we can define the component, which is the y-axis on our machine. Select the drop-down, select the z-axis, and pick that axis on the machine. Continue working through to set the B-axis and finally the C-axis. With all of our axes set, we should enter the offset value between the machine home position and the Z-axis. So I'll set the Z-axis location and I know that that distance is 22.35 inches. So we've got that all set. Let's go ahead and try a manual simulation to see if everything's working. I'll select manually simulate. We can start to drag the sliders to see if the x-axis is working. The y-axis is moving correctly. The z-axis is moving correctly. The b-axis is rotating. And the c-axis is rotating. We can go ahead and reset the simulation. We'll select OK. And I'm going to go ahead and save this machine. Our note is indicating that those components are saved virtually inside of this assembly, so when I pass this machine assembly on to somebody else, I only need to save the assembly. It's not necessary to save each of the components as well. At this point, I think it's a good idea to go ahead and hide that stock body. And I actually have a 5-axis aerospace component that we need to run a simulation on. So we'll go ahead and control tab over to that part and run a simulation. I've got my two operations selected. I'll simply right click and select machine simulate. We can select our machine, click open, and the part loads inside of the machine. I'm going to press escape to get the component where I want it on the table. And I'll also go ahead and turn off ambient inclusion to make things a little brighter. Now we'll simply zoom in here. And you'll see the parts currently floating. We can go ahead and use SolidWorks mates to get it precisely where we want on the machine. We're going to add a concentric mate to the table, and then we'll add a coincident mate uh, to get it down to the face of the table. So we've got our fixture located on the table correctly. You can go ahead and say OK, 
move back to the cam tab and click simulate. Let's zoom out so we can see what's happening here. We'll hit play. Our machine simulation begins to simulate what's actually going to take place on the machine for machining this component. Well, I trust this video is a help for users looking to set up their multi-axis machines inside of HSM Works for the purposes of machine simulation. As a quick side note, this same process can be used to set up machines inside of HSM Express, our free solution for two and a half axis programming inside of SOLIDWORKS.